Hey! Hey, hey. Hi, this is Michelle Martin, and we are back for another interview in our ongoing series of interviews with entrepreneurs called How They Do It. And today we have with us Ian Cross, uh, who is uh, an, the owner of Eyesight, right? That's the name of your company? Correct. Okay. Hello, Ian. Welcome. We finally got through all of our tech problems, and here we are. Morning, Michelle. Glad to be here. So um, I wanted to start with talking with you a little bit about your company, um, how that came about, um, how you got that started, and what, what your company is. Okay, well, Eyesight, um, which I have to say, first of all, is spelled the letter I dash, the letter S I T E, because of the many possible spellings of Eyesight. Very um, true. And we will have a link to it so that people can follow it. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, anyway, so um, yeah, the company was founded back in 1996. Uh, my background is in ergonomics, um, so I'm really a product designer, and I got into digital design back in the early 90s in a previous job. I did actually, I was employed before I became uh, a business owner, uh -huh. so I did cut my teeth a little bit somewhere else, which was very, very helpful as it turned out when I started Eyesight. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of what Eyesight does, uh, basically we're a technology and marketing firm. So okay. we help companies have ideas, products to basically take them online, and of course that has changed and continues to change rapidly as technology evolves. So Great. that's kind of our day-to-day, -day. it's our day-to-day -day passion. Um, we're in Old City, Philadelphia. We're a boutique firm. Um, we don't take every job that comes our way. We like to work with jobs that challenge us. So uh -huh. um, you know, we like to be put on the rack, you know, stretched out a little bit into the <laughs> Yes. And such. Um, but that's, you know, and of course there's a lot more to talk about in terms of eyesight and how I've kind of come from the initiation of eyesight back in 1996 all the way through to um, 2014. Well, what made you, so that's it, I, I think a lot of people, you know, start out, they have a job, they're working um, yeah. for someone else. What was it that made you decide, you know, I don't want to be an employee anymore, I want to start up my own firm? Okay, uh, definitely a couple of things. To that. I think I became very independent-minded when, uh, when I was younger. Um, I, don't, I, I, I don't come from an entrepreneurial family as such, mm -hmm. but um, I always like kind of doing things my own way. And uh, I kind of identified this probably when I was a teenager. And, um, and of course then, you know, I was kind of pushed into the system, which is you go to college, you know, et cetera, you go into the career center, you get a job, right. you don't do something wrong with you, you're a freak, you better slap him around a little bit until he does what he's told. Um, but, you know, so being in ergonomics, um, it was kind of an evolving field at the time. And one of the things I think helped me with that is that a lot of people who are getting into the field were already entrepreneurs. There weren't really ergonomics companies around. Right. I think like, you know, the, like the uh, late 80s. I graduated in 88, in early 90s. So some of the people I fell in initially when I first got into the ergonomics uh, field when I graduated were entrepreneurs. And my first job here in Philadelphia, the reason I came to Philadelphia, I got hired by an independent consultant. And, you know, she, you know, I started working with her and it was challenging work, but I got exposed to the fact that she could not only just do great work for her clients, but she kind of could direct the company. And that kind of resonated with me and I kind of liked that, liked that approach. Um, another reason was um, a, a lady called Josette Bonafino, who I think you uh, may know. We have talked um, with her. <laughs> who, uh, I met uh, yeah, in 1991. Um, uh, when I was early in my days at Philadelphia, and she was the publisher of, publisher slash editor of this uh, newspaper, and she was her own boss, and she was like 23 years old, and I was just blown away. Uh -huh. I mean, she had a boss as such, but she was calling the shots, she was making it all happen, and I'm like, I like this lady, I like the way she does things, and um, so when we became more connected, and uh, we became a couple, um, she was ready uh, in the stage of uh, starting up her own newspaper. And so, you know, that was exciting. I was kind of tangentially involved with that. She let me somewhere close to it, but not too close. Because right. um, my lack of experience, you know. Uh -huh. She interviewed me and wouldn't hire me, you know, I didn't know enough. Um, but I think it was just the environment that I was in. And uh, it was exciting. You know, it was, it was very different to the idea. A lot of my friends and stuff were going to work for large corporations. Nothing wrong with that at all. But it really, you know, was, was you know, much more exciting to be around these, these people who were doing their own thing. 
Right. Well, you're bringing up a couple of uh, things that I think um, are true for a lot of entrepreneurs. So one thing that you mentioned was this idea that um, you like doing things your own way. <laughs> and yeah. I, if I found one theme about from talking to other entrepreneurs, it is that we are pretty independent and we don't like to be someone's employee. We're great with being able to work with customers, you know, and but we need to have much more of a sense of self-direction. And I'm definitely hearing that coming through where you were like, okay, well, you know, I, what's attractive to me is this idea that I can direct my own life, direct my own work, right? Absolutely. And, and yeah. like I said, that's something I think happened from being very independent when I was a kid. Right. I, I well, mean, I, because especially when you talk with young people, you know, a lot of times we act like, Oh well, if you're that independent mind, because independent minded people also tend to get into trouble more. So, you know, I always feel like if you could redirect that, right? Um, because it's really about being able to separate from the crowd and do your own thing. I want to do your own thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, and um, I mean, I think that, like you said, it's, it's sometimes a matter of wanting to do your own thing, but not wanting to do the own other thing as well. Right. You know, right. I mean, I think it's a combination of the two. I mean, yeah. you know, um, I don't know how many young entrepreneurs you talk to in, in terms of what you're doing, but, um, you know, I spent a year between high school and college where I went to California, and my sister happened to be living there, but, you know, I had to find work, I had to do my own thing, I mean, she was supportive, and she gave me a key to the, the flat, <laughs> the apartment, <laughs> but that was about it, I was on my own. Right. So I really had no choice but to, to learn those lessons then as well. It was terrifying, it was terrifying. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. the, first, the first steps you take into entrepreneurship are, are, are extremely scary, I think, you know, and, and in terms of decision making and, you know, I think it depends. I mean, I think that some people have more mentorship early on when they're starting their own businesses and, and careers. Um, I wasn't one of those, those people and I think Josette was the same. Right. Um, you know, it was just kind of try it and see if it works. Um, but you've got to have a ridiculous amount of, of delusional self-belief as well. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it's. <laughs> you have what to do you mean? So say what you mean about that. <laughs> well, you just kind of know. You know, you have this belief in yourself. You're gonna be a little kind of out there about it. Like, oh, I know this is gonna work out. I just know it. You know. Right. It's it's kind of like confidence, but not being arrogant because right. the, behind the scenes you're absolutely petrified. Right. You know, you understand that when in business, so much of what nothing really happens unless you're able to communicate with people, have conversations, build trust with them. And ultimately, if you are selling products or services, be able to sell your products and services. And that's right. kind of what happened with eyesight. I mean, I, I was still working in my previous position where I actually had, I was there for three and a half years, I had a lot of autonomy in my previous position already. So I'd already kind of been in a position where I was almost like an entrepreneur within a company. Right. And, um, you, you know, and I was able to you know, think, well, you know, where am I going to take this skill and ability? And I was starting to build the confidence to do my own thing. And, of course, like I had a good cheerleader in Josette yet again. I keep saying right. Josette, not, but for good reason. I mean, she, you know, was like, she was already doing it. Right. You know, I could go home every day, and she was working out of the home, and I saw an entrepreneur. Um, you know, so, you know, I was already, I was already living with someone who kind of had those, those skills. But for us... You know, um, what happened is I, had, I met a friend, uh, I had a friend who lives in the same building and we just started chatting casually about the internet and the web and this is 1995 and we're both passionate about it. Right. And it took a little encouragement to go off and start a new business, but we did it in a way which it was very um, uh, bootstrapped. Yeah. You no, know, I mean well, it was, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. No, I mean it started in his second bedroom so the rent was free. <laughs> and going out and talking, yeah, talking to people and, and saying, you know, there's this thing called the internet that's coming along, you, or the web. You probably haven't heard about it, or if you had, it, you know, it's for kids, uh, whatever. But it's going to be, it's going to change the way you do business. And we started having those conversations, and you need to have some delusional, you know, I mean, we, we, and we were selling something that didn't really exist, right, at the time. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't something that most people could even understand what what it, what the hell it was. Right. <laughs> right. You know, it wasn't like saying we're selling, uh, we're selling, you know, something which people have been using, you know, like uh, selling phones for thousands <laughs> of years. And it was, you know, so for us it was a little, little different as well. Yeah. Well, and I think that, so on the one hand, you guys were on the edge of something where there was a lot of opportunity. So it was wide open. You could really look at, you know, how can we shape this new thing? 
um, and and work with this new opportunity, which I think for you know some entrepreneurs that's fantastic. But then of course you run up with up against the issue of how do you help people understand something that they don't yet understand or know much about? So how are you able to get them to realize, oh, there is opportunity there? Right. Well, we didn't know much about it either, so. <laughs> well, so that's a, <laughs> you learn as you go, right? Yeah, well, exactly. You do learn as you go. You know, yeah. and you learn by listening. I mean, not clearly. I right. Mean, you, you can, I think a lot of entrepreneurs early on, they have such a strong idea of what they want to do, they're not listening they're just talking, they're just pushing and pushing and pushing, and they're not listening to the people they're trying to sell stuff to. I mean, we first went out to adding, you know, our strategy, I mean, we sat down and had a couple of beers and said, what's our strategy here? We're selling something that we're learning about, um, so we're still basically cutting our teeth on it, and that the market doesn't, you know, really understand yet. Right. Uh, you know, so, when we went, so when we started talking, our strategy was to go to ad agencies, very specific, maybe too specific for this conversation, but was to go to ad agencies because we thought they would understand what we were talking about. Right. And they already had the clients, and we didn't at that point, we didn't feel like we were in a position to go directly to the clients to talk about something that we were still learning about. So we felt like, well, let's go that route. And in fact, what ultimately happened, which is kind of interesting, is that we used that process to learn a lot more about what their clients wanted or what the marketplace wanted. They ultimately didn't hire us. I mean, we spoke to like 30 agencies in Philadelphia Initially, not one of them would hire us. They're like, "Who are the kids, and what are they doing?" Or, you know, and and they're like, "Should we be doing it ourselves?" You know, so they were they were kind of listening to us and kind of mining from us, and we were kind of listening to them and what their landscape was and learning from them, and that gave us the confidence to go directly to other companies, understanding the landscape of selling, you know, technology and marketing services better. Because right. neither of us came from that background. We, you right. know. It's classically, you know, when you look at starting a new business, you think, well, what knowledge do I have I can migrate into this business? Yep. We have the marketing and some of the technology and design, but we didn't have the business experience. Yep. So that was well, you guys did something that um, I think most successful entrepreneurs certainly do, and that is, you know, you really get out there and start having conversations with people, uh, and you're open to, you know, whatever conversation you can have that's going to help you learn and grow and develop, and you don't always know that it's going to lead to some kind of paying gig or situation, uh, and sometimes that's okay, I think, because from that process you learn so much and it can help you really formulate your strategy. But I think a lot of um, entrepreneurs who are very new at it uh, and maybe are coming more from a, an employee kind of thinking background, they're very afraid to put their ideas out there. They're very afraid to you know, go have conversations with people. But certainly in my experience, and it sounds like for you too, you find that in getting out there and talking to people and saying this is kind of what we're thinking and how does this fit in and, and all of that, you really start to get to some deeper, richer opportunities. Yeah, that was kind of like our research, really. Yeah. The end of the day. You know, yeah. that's what we learned, learned a little bit about. And, you know, we were very willing to accept failure as well. I mean, in some yeah. ways we were able to migrate. I mean, we both were doing other work. So it wasn't like if this didn't work out. It wasn't like you know we'd been in corporate America and we lost our jobs or right. we just had to move out and we, you know, a lot of people in that situation they sometimes have um, some funds and everything. We didn't really have any funds, um, but you know, back to the point that I think you mentioned about the, you know people um, coming out of companies and and, and having the conf confidence and to share their ideas. I think to me, yet again, it's just about corporate America. The psychology of corporate America has evolved, thankfully, in the last few years as well, where I think that people at companies, large companies, are realizing for their companies to succeed, they need to open up the ideas that their employees have and treat them with respect. Well, mm -hmm. that was never the culture 20 years ago. You know, when we started iSight, it was like, you know, here's your job, you do what you're told, and right. much outside the box. So I think it was exciting at this point that people are working in companies and they have ideas and they have environments uh, where they can learn and, and share their ideas internally because they're starting to develop those skills that they'll need when they get out there and they do their own thing. Right. Although I, I do think that it depends on the industry. You know, I think that you may be connected to industries where that's more the case, but I, I know a cool. lot of companies where that's, that and, and organizations where it's still not very supportive of entrepreneurial thinking, but I think that that's um, going to be a challenge for them in being able to evolve and innovate because if you are not open to that kind of stuff, 
Uh, I, I mean, really, we're at this stage where everyone needs to be entrepreneurial, whether you're you know, in a company or outside of a company for just a lot of reasons. Let me, I wanted to um, ask you another question, um, and, and that was about the fact that you ended up uh, working with a partner. You know, again, a lot of times uh, entrepreneurs start up, and I think Josette was kind of like this where, and I know I was, where you are the one who, you know, you have the ideas, you have the things that you're doing and so forth, and so you're kind of do, working more on your own or more independently, um, but you clearly started your business in collaboration with someone. Um, what, you know, what were the good things, the bad things, you know, what do you think is kind of the difference there? Okay, excellent question. Um, well, yeah, like I said, every situation is different. Sure. Um, what made our collaboration exciting was just this mutual passion for what we were doing. And sometimes that's a difficult thing, I think, if you're by yourself. You know, you're kind of relying on yourself to be the cheerleader at the same time. So we had that. But we also, I mean, this was a very specific situation where my business, uh, business partner, Ray Katz, he had very specific skills in terms of technology and business uh, administration as well. Mm -hmm. And I came more from the kind of design, creative thinking area. So it just seemed like a logical, logical marriage, and it worked worked really well. I think um, you know all businesses have their have their evolutionary cycles, and one of the things you've got to do constantly if you have a business partner because there's pro definitely pros and cons. I mean, one you know, I mean, obviously there was there was the positive of being having a collaborator, right? Uh, and you know, you feel a little safer, you know, in a way. Right. You're like, okay, well, at least one person doesn't think I'm crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at least they're they're doing their job. Um, but it's complicated setting up partnerships sometimes. I mean, you know, uh, you're definitely going to have to think a lot more about the financial situation. Uh -huh. What arrangement do you want? Are you going to be an LLC, incorporated? Are you going to start off as a partnership, evolve into something else? And that's kind of what we did. We just started off as a pure partnership because neither of us were really sure where this was going to go. Uh -huh. And um, um, But, you know, and of course, this is so highly dependent on the individual uh, and, you know, as to who the person is and, and, and how you mesh. But I think over time, you know, you're obviously clearly going to keep evolving. And I think that's, you know, and you can say that about any relationship in life. Um, sure. <laughs> but, sure. you know, it, the idea, learning business applies to everything. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you have common goals for a certain period of time. Sure. So what is your long-term plan? And, you know, uh, at, at that time in the late 90s, early 2000s, it was all about growth, growth, acquisition, merger, et cetera, et cetera. And I think Ray and I were in eyesight for something different. You know, that wasn't our goal. We weren't just purely business people. I mean, all the businesses that Joseph and I have done have been not just driven by pure financial considerations and everything else. They've been driven by interest, passion. And, you know, I think that we were, we kind of defined that to the degree that while we were looking to learn our craft and solidify and keep the company small and specialized, a lot of the other companies in our space were, were growing they had mentors and they're saying, let's put a board together, grow, 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 we're going to get you on Wall Street, IPO, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And, I mean, what's interesting about EyeSight is that, you know, uh, we probably didn't develop the amount of wealth that some of those other companies had, but when you aggregated over the, the life cycle of the company we had, but we didn't in the first two to three years because a lot of those companies just failed. They just, um, they just basically could, they didn't have the, the, um, um, the mechanisms or the relate, you know, they just didn't, they were too going after the, the golden goose, you know. Right. And I think that you've got to be really, you know, if you're an individual entrepreneur, you've really got to be so patient, you know, with, you know, what's going to happen with your business. So that was one thing. And then the other thing is, like I said, ev evolving in different directions. I mean, I, I think realistically, you know, we realized that like, this partnership was not going to last forever. And it was a good thing, unless we had a, a defined exit strategy. You know, yeah. we were going to work together for 10 years and then we were going to sell the company or merge or whatever. Uh, you know, and so ultimately we came to agreement that I, you know, that he was going to leave and I was going to take over the company 100%. And I think that worked out well for both of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, there was something nice about being the, the, sole, the sole person. Uh, obviously, um, in terms of having that kind of complete control. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you still have employees and you're still, if you have a company that has employees, maybe you do, maybe you don't, and you're still collaborating. Right. Uh, you know, and you've got to make sure you have the right people and those people still very much become part of the vision even if they're not owners of the company. So. Right, right. Uh, well, especially when you're in a very, in a small startup situation, 
Um, I mean, it's people, you're very personally involved with people and, and they have to very much buy into your vision. It's not like they're, you know, three departments away from you. Um, I, I think that that smaller approach, definitely, you know, you have to have stronger kinds of relationships um, with those people. So um, I'm, I could talk with you forever about this, Ian, as I told you before we started. These are the kinds of conversations yeah. that I love. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we're getting to the end of our time. So I want to ask you um, if you could give advice to your 1995 business self um, from where you are now, um, what, would, what advice would you give? What, what do you feel like are the biggest lessons that maybe you've learned in the, in the intervening years? Oh, wow. I don't think I've even thought about that. I'm too busy thinking about my next business to be, ah, okay. you know, reflecting on, on, on what's, what's happened in the, in the past. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, giving myself advice as to doing things a little differently, you mean? Uh -huh. what would be different? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I prob I think I probably would when I think about it, probably would have had more mentorship, business mentorship. And I, I was fortunate having Josette, but she was right. also learning, learning as well. And um, it took probably a little bit too long to get to know some other business owners who were doing similar type stuff. But the funny thing about that is when I did get into that, I went gusto on it. And, you know, I was involved in forming a new media association in Philadelphia. Uh -huh. um, I said, like, we don't want to happen what happened in the advertising scene where people start fighting because they're losing business. We want everyone to get on and we have a healthy community. We can classic community strategy. You know, right. everyone's going to be really well off. So I think in some, maybe it took me a little lo longer to work that out. It became a little bit too internalized um, and became not, you know, which is sometimes an issue. You're so focused on what you're doing day to day and your clients that you're not always looking outside and seeing what's happening happening outside. And the way you do that is through developing a network of peers, um, you know, a respectful network of peers. Right, right. Looking for more collaborations. I mean, we did ultimately end up getting retained by a couple of agencies where we learned a little bit more about the business landscape, which was good. But uh, I think I probably would have given myself to advice to be a little bit more aggressive on early on partnerships early on, with the caveat that you've got to be very cautious. You've got to have good contracts, good you know, good ways right. to remove yourself from those partnerships. Uh, you know, if if there is an issue, but it, it took us a, it took us a while to really to really learn what we needed to learn, get to where we needed to get, and in some ways, from a competitive advantage standpoint, yet again, this is just the our story. Um, it, we'd, we'd had more partners on board early and probably been a little bit more outward, you know, looked a little bit more outside of what we were doing. Um, we probably could have created a better company quicker, a, a better company in terms of not just the finances, you know, right. a bit assessed yeah. on that, but better quality product, um, better ability to understand the, the marketplace, develop good vision long term, and just a stronger company. Right. So it sounds like seeking out more of a collaborative learning community of peers yeah. earlier on would have yeah. been very helpful to you. Not necessarily in terms of, you know, active mentorship as people typically think of mentorship, but in having kind of those connections and collaborations and conversations that happen when you're learning with like-minded peers. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, I definitely, I definitely think that would have helped. I mean, I think we were also we were doing all the work when we first started the company. So when you sure. look at the products website, well, of course it was websites. It was like Netscape 1.1. Do people know what that was? <laughs> um, yes, that, I remember Netscape. <laughs> yeah, that was I know that was our browser and yeah. the primary browser. But we were like doing all the work as well. And you know, like I said, I think that yet again you get kind of caught up in that. You know, that's great if you're an artist and you're like, you know, like let's say you're a designer and you're doing handbags and you're the artist and that's great. You get so much into that world, you're not spending enough time. That's where you need the mentorship or the help to develop a business plan, not a business plan. I don't really believe in business plans per se, but the idea that you could, that you could have um, additional resources on the outside which free you up to then be more of a business person. Right. And, you know, it took us a while to hire our first couple of employees who could actually start doing some of the work so we could right. really focus on the, on the growth and the expansion and the, and the vision and the ideas. So you can get trapped and you can get kind of trapped in a bubble pretty quickly right. um, of, of doing what you're doing and getting comfortable with it because there's right. not every day you have to get up and challenge yourself. You can never get in the comfort zone. 
plus in business, if you get in the comfort zone, you know, ultimately, it ain't going to be simple, you know, I mean, and I know that really well with ICE, and with the trestle in as well, quite honestly. Yeah. Every yeah. day is a new day in business where you have to come up with new ideas and challenge yourself and challenge the people around you. So, yeah, yeah there were definitely some lessons lessons learned there. And yeah. uh, you know, maybe I would have cut my hair. I had long hair. Maybe I would have cut my hair shorter. <laughs> hair, but I don't know. But I went to those boardrooms and those large corporations. But actually, I was very fortunate. I was very fortunate to be in an industry where you could you could define your own style and go in there and tell you know CEOs how to behave on the internet. And they would let you could get away with it, even if you were like wearing sandals. <laughs> right, right. So you know, I was lucky. It's not. It doesn't apply. The rules don't apply to everybody. But be yourself. Be yourself. If you're not yourself, don't try and be somebody else. Everyone looks to other businesses and they're like, okay, these people are succeeding. I want to. I got to behave like them and be like them. No, you're not like them. Let them succeed over here being themselves. So I think that's really important as well. Don't compromise your own identity because that ultimately is what's gonna. Going to really, really, people pick up on that. They when Absolutely. they themselves, they're like, I'm interested in this person, and I want to, I want to work with this person. I want to collaborate with this person. So get out there and be your interesting self. Exactly. And if you're not interesting, become more interesting. <laughs> Fantastic. That's like the best piece of advice I think you can give to anyone. So. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, um, I I need to close. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I really have enjoyed talking with you, Ian. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. This is this is Michelle Martin, and this has been the How They Do It interview series. We've been talking with Ian Cross of Eyesight, and I want to thank you, Ian. It's been a great conversation. Thanks. Thank you, Michelle. Pleasure.